Welcome to the Note Investor Podcast. We'll guide you through the ups and downs of note investing and teach you all about the nitty gritty details of the business that other people won't talk about. Your host, Dan Deppin, is a former aerospace engineer and product manager who transitioned away from cubicle life to full-time note investing in 2018. Our website is www.fusionnotes.com, where you can subscribe to this podcast, comment, and find links to other information on note investing. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Note Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Deppin, and today I'm joined by Rachel from First National Acceptance. So, Rachel, how are you doing? Hey, great. Thanks so much for having me. How are you? Good, good. Well, thanks so much for joining. I've been meaning to have you guys on for a while. So First National Acceptance is a company that I've used a handful of times to sell notes and is actually like my favorite place to sell notes, if I can. Um, but maybe you can just start by giving us like a little bit of an overview of, of what you guys do and, and kind of what your role is over there. Sure. So we purchase first lien performing notes, all 50 states. Um, we don't really have a cap. Uh, on dollar size, high dollar wise. Um, we do prefer a balance over $25,000. Um, but other than that, we're pretty straightforward. We step into the seller's shoes. We take overall servicing from there on out. You know, we don't change the terms uh, and we do pay all closing costs. So appraisals, evaluations, all the legwork that's gonna go into getting the note closed. Uh, we're gonna pay for that and we're gonna get you closed within about uh, 26 days is our turnaround time right now. So nice. And then kind of like, what's the process for new investors? Like if they want to work with you guys and have you give them a quote on yeah, something? So we can get a quote pretty easy as long as we have the terms and property address. I'm always going to say, if you can get the borrower's information, if it's going to be, you know, non-personally guaranteed or, or guaranteed, if you can give us their name, that's going to help us so much uh, really get you a quote, a solid quote right up front. The terms are going to be ideal, knowing the interest rate, how long our money is going to be invested for, how the property is being used. So our top brokers seem to be very successful. And right up front, they say, hey, we have a house, but this house, the borrower is actually using it as a rental. Knowing how the property is used uh, up front, it just helps get a clear quote right, right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, what I like about working with you guys is you've just got such a clear process like you just fill in all the information and then you guys have your processes on your end and come back mm -hmm. and either say like yeah we can do it and this is the price or no yep. we yep. can't because because one of the things like i deal with when i sell to individuals is it it can be kind of a pain because folks are all over the map like we reach a deal and then they come back later with some concern or they try to like change the price without like a real reason and so a lot of those don't go anywhere like i like it with you guys like it's just all very defined like you know exactly what you're dealing with we try very hard sometimes that evaluation might come in not the way anyone's expecting <laughs> and sure, there's yeah. nothing we can do about that one uh, <laughs> but as long as you have a good no uh good evaluation that comes in and clear title i mean some of our our files are closing within nine days um, we, our processors are very diligent. As soon as they get an approved file, uh, they already have title in most of the time. Um, so they're just waiting on a few items and, and they're ready to go get this thing closed. Yeah. You mentioned 26 days. I think all the ones I've sold through, you guys have gone like quite a bit faster yeah. than that, probably closer to that nine days. I'm, I'm taking in all of our loans. So, so those sure, uh, sure. Mobile yeah. home titles that always get lost. <laughs> or you have some easement issues that we're working on with the title companies to get cleared up. Um, so, you know, we buy anywhere from 80 to 150 loans every single month. Um, so it's collateral from vacant land um, to commercial or, um, you know, we even have a few mobile home parks that, that happen to come about. So all of those in general, we take into consideration for our time to close. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know you bought all those other kinds of loans because for, for me personally, I only do single family. Okay. Residents, we but that's interesting you can family. buy all those others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> single families, I will say, you know, those, those are our prime bread and butter. We absolutely love them. If you have a single family residence um, in, a, in a residential area, that has good equity. Oh my word, we are all over it. Some of our our offers go down to a three or four percent discount on those ones, or um, 
goodness, they uh, we, we we want those. <laughs> yeah, and so when you say like like three or four percent discount, right? Like I think like you're implying like what you're paying is in the you know ninety percent plus absolutely of balance for those. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the other thing I like work, working with you guys is you pay basically the highest of everyone else, but your underwriting standards are tougher. So like what I found is if I'm selling a loan, if I can sell it to you guys, then I do. And then if stuff has hair on it and I can't, then I have to go elsewhere. Yeah, I will say, um, you know, uh, having as much due diligence and, and upfront. So if you have a new note that the purchaser put uh, 20 or 30% down, we really, our underwriters, we really want to see it. And, you know, us as analysts too, we want to see that too. We want to see that the purchasers invested in this property. Um, we want to see that they're, they're definitely into it for the long haul. Our underwriting process, I do feel like we're all getting, it's going a lot better. You know, analysts, we know exactly what we want up front. We want six months pay history, um, a good evaluation to come in, but our underwriters are great to work with to try and find a way to try and save the deal if we can, absolutely. But sometimes, sometimes we, we can't buy them all. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. And a lot of the ones I like to buy are a little sketchy or a little <laughs> hairy because I, I can pick them up cheaper and I can deal with You're them. You're probably getting a good yield on those. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm getting a huge deal, but if I want to turn around and sell them, that just sometimes limits where you can go. It, it does limit it. <laughs> yeah. So, so what kinds of things like, like if somebody's new to note investing and they want to, you know, broker a note or sell one to you, like, like what are some of the things people should be thinking about, or maybe like some of the common mistakes you, you see people do? Sure. Um, so a lot of the common mistakes are people just don't get that information about how the borrower signed up front. Uh, we'll have so many people that just say, oh, assume this borrower has 700 credit. And then we get the note and it's like, oh my word, it's actually signed in an LLC. There's no credit to be held accountable here. <laughs> you know, if that business decides I'm not paying and I'm closing, we can't go after an actual individual anymore at that point. Sure, you have property as collateral, but I mean, we're buying that paper. We want that cash flow. <laughs> we, right. we do not want to have that opportunity for the cash flow, you know? Um, so, so knowing that getting everything that you possibly can up front. So when I say that, you know, when, when did that first down payment happen? What's the true interest rate? Is there a balloon? Having a balloon or no balloon definitely affects any investor's pricing. You know, if we're going to be tied up for a traditional 30 years opposed to eight years, um, oh my word, our pricing just changes significantly. Um, like, like in which direction, like which, like, like in which cases pay, are pricing higher? Sure. So we would pay more uh, if our money is invested for a smaller period of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if there's a balloon payment attached, then that increases the value. Correct. Yeah. Um, and you know what I would also find too is um, our most, our, our brokers or our sellers who understand uh, the benefits of a partial are huge, especially when you have a property that has really no idea where that's going to value. Maybe properties in the area have just tanked or there's just no other opportunity for any growth in the community. So you're not building anything new, you know, what's there is there. Um, knowing a good partial, uh, if you get a rocky value or maybe your pay history is a little spotty or area concerns, you know, if there happened to be a flood a few, not too long ago, tornado zones, hurricanes sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. partials are a very solid way to go and the more people understand that the seller's aspect, uh, you know, they, they are getting them wrapped up very quickly and a handful every single month that, that they're closing on. Oh, so you're saying that, so that you'll, so you'll buy partials from a seller, like you'll buy some of the payments versus the entire loan. Absolutely. So we can buy a pro. Everyone's going to tell you it differently. <laughs> um, so we're happy to quote it either way buying just a straight percentage of the unpaid balance and or um, a, an estimated amount of payments. Mm -hmm. We can get you some cash out of it now, uh, turn around and buy, uh, buy more of it later to get you some capital out. You know, a lot of our uh, investors or a lot of our uh, businesses as sellers, they're always looking for ways to get some capital. 
uh, without having to pay it back or pay interest fees. Um, you know, interest rates are just all over the place right now. Why take out a loan when you can get some capital out of your note? Mm -hmm. And then who knows, maybe your life changes and you can take those payments out later, uh, take the payments back, or maybe you just sell in partials all the time and have constant that, capital flow. That's cool. And how do the mechanics of those partial arrangements work? Like would the seller then, would, would the loan get transferred from their loan servicer to yours? And I'm guessing you have like a partial agreement. That gets sure. put together. I was curious how that worked, the nuts and bolts of that. Yeah. Um, so it can work a couple of different ways. First National, we're happy to service any loan we hold, but if you were buying a partial and the purchaser loves that servicing company, they can actually keep the payments going through that servicing company. The only difference that the, that the purchaser is going to see is just um, who or, or where the payment gets submitted from the servicers. At. Um, so what that would look like is say we bought um, you know, 20% of your loan out, we cash the seller that 20% during that time frame. First National is the one collecting payments. Uh, they've assigned a portion of their note over to us. Um, and then after our balance is paid off that we had agreed on with the seller, we either release the payments back or sometimes the seller wants another partial offer. Um, but the, the, the payment stream from the purchaser's aspect is very straightforward. If there's no service in place, then then at that point, they would send it directly to us. Um, but again, if they prefer that servicing company, which, you know, their servicers are great to have in place, um, they're, they're more than welcome to keep paying those their servicing companies. Yeah, and then the question people always ask on the partial agreements is what, what happens if the borrower stops paying? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's always a tricky one because it's like, why are we talking about them to stop pay? We don't, we, we don't want right, to Hopefully that doesn't happen, gonna... but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lots of different ways. So our customer service is great on getting uh, the seller on the phone um, to see if, you know, they're happy on just us working out a situation with the purchaser, maybe for, you know, COVID took everyone for a whirlwind. Um, maybe they just need their payments, um, a smaller uh, a smaller payment made for just a certain period of time. Uh, and we're happy to work with them as long as the seller's on board too on and, you know, if it makes sense for a purchaser to skip a payment or to reduce the payment for a little bit of time uh, until the balance gets paid off, um, sellers always have the option to also come in and uh, try and find a way to get it transferred back over to them also. Yeah. Right. And then like, like during COVID, how, what, what did you guys see? Did you see most borrowers hanging in there or did you see, you know, we were actually, uh, yeah, so we were prepped for, um, we were prepped for uh, the entire industry to take a, day, a take, all, all 50 states. Um, we were ready for it, but it didn't happen. Um, it did not, we did not see hardly as many loans going to default. We really didn't. Um, a handful of people, of course, used, you know, like a, a, a skip period or a grace period or something along those lines, but mm -hmm. no. Um, all the way from Maine to California, our loans, our loans performed very well. Um, and, and we bought and we're still buying. I think even December of, of 2020 was one of our greatest cash outs we've had um, in the history of us buying for over oh, 50 years, um, which none of us seen happening, um, but it was. Yeah, I, I was in the same boat, right? Exactly where like I had that same thought process when that hit, I was like, okay, I need to really buckle up and like be on point for everything because this is going to get exactly. really weird so I need to figure out like how to negotiate this because like every I, I just assumed like everything was going to go completely red we're the same <laughs> and, and it didn't like like everybody hung in I don't know if it was just because of all the stimulus checks or people you know prioritize their home payment yeah or what but I, I, I was really pleasantly surprised from our aspect, I think people just really uh, value that home payment and they value their collateral. Um, you know, the stimulus check, we do purchaser interviews on a handful of our files. And I think when COVID first happened, uh, we were pretty firm on doing a purchaser interview on probably 90% of it. And what that is, is just us touching base with the borrower before we close to make sure collaterals, you know, everything you thought it would be and, and, and payments, no problem, truly. Um, and to make sure there's like no other terms out there. So, but no, um, our purchaser interviews, maybe one out of every 10 said that they might be looking for that stimulus check or relying on it, but it, mm -hmm. 
it really shook, took us by surprise on just how well um, borrowers uh, perform through this time frame. Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise for sure. <laughs> it really was. And maybe you can talk a little bit more about those borrower interviews, because that's one part of your process that I find like kind of unique, right? So when I'm selling yeah. a loan, like actually you guys are the only ones I'll actually allow to talk to okay. a borrower. If it's anybody else, I'm like, there's no way on earth. There's no there's way. so many jokers. So it is kind of a, yeah, yeah a, a unique thing that at least for me isn't isn't typical, but yeah. So we come off very um how do I word it? Um we come off very in the purchaser's favor. Just hi, uh this is Rachel calling on behalf of the seller. Um, just wanting to make, and we, you know, we don't usually use a company name just because we do work with brokers and sellers directly. So um, mm -hmm. we just, you know, just wanted to let you know that this loan was looking to be possibly transferred um, or we can call, make the call as, you know, a, as a financial uh, opportunity for the borrower. Either way, however, the seller is concerned about going about it, you know, we're happy to work it on. Um, but our point is just, we just want to make sure the terms you signed upon uh, were true and accurate and there's no other terms out there. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you love the property? Great. Why don't you tell me about the property? Oh, you don't want to talk about it? That's okay. Thanks for giving me that point of contact. You know, so we definitely have a few circles to go around it. Sometimes we'll do a purchaser interview and I have numerous times, for example, um, I had a seller bring me two copies of a signed note. One was saying that the first payment started in January of a certain year. And one was saying it was started in uh, July in another certain year. You know, it's kind of good to get a borrower on the phone in that situation and say, hey, you know, how long have you making your payments on this? We just want to make sure the balance is accurate. Um, I've had a file where uh, the appraisal came back and said there's an entire tarp on the back of the roof and the entire there's just no roof and it's getting all repaired and I was just like but I know these people have kids you know like how would they be living in a home with three kids and it just didn't make sense so I got on the phone with the borrower and she's like no there we're just you know we have a lot of sap coming down um, from the maples behind us. So I, I mm. just damaged the roof. Um, they're replacing it. There is a roof and, and we were still able to close uh, both of those loans in those situations. So just having a, an under or a, a, the borrower's end of it, opposed to just only taking the seller's word or an evaluation that came in kind of spotty, um, really can clear up a situation and, and definitely move forward to getting that closed. Yeah, I never take the borrower's word or the, uh, the seller's word. I mean, and, you know, you always have to verify every trust, but verify everything. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. Um, we'll have a situation when in that that two note situation, the seller's like, oh, no, we went to pay. You know, she started thinking about she was going to and you know pay for it for so long, but she really didn't start paying. And I was like, that doesn't seem fair right why would she sign saying she paid a whole year and a half prior to this one and you know <laughs> yeah that's weird um I yeah the other thing I bumped into is I bought loans where I found out there were like unrecorded land contracts yeah where that borrower was long gone and I had to you know and I was able to like to chase them down and get them to just sign the the release but yeah there's all kinds of interesting things interesting <laughs> we'll yeah. leave it or interesting living situations. Um, I had one where the water was shut off for like okay. a couple months. It was actually in Michigan, but but the guy was living there because it was winter time. And I had pictures of his car was there. You could see car trucks. Yeah. People were going in and out. And I called the city back. I was like, are you, are you sure the water's off? They're like, oh yeah, it's definitely off. So I moved away for that one just seems super weird. I, I don't think I closed on on that one. But yeah, some of these situations can be really they, the they can be very weird, uh, but I'm glad you called the county. Um, that's always a good aspect, too. Sometimes I'm quick to get on the phone with them, too. Just, What's your take on this? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, because I've had ones where the seller's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's owner occupied. Everything's good. And then you make some calls. It's like, yeah, the power and water have been shut off for like eight months. <laughs> like, oh, like no. OK, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fun stories about that. I had a seller just not even know. I think I really think he was truly just like, hey, I'm receiving payments on this note. Um, I want to sell it. He was an older gentleman. Only note he's ever had. He used to live in the property. 
um, three or four years into the note, great seasoning. So I'm like, this is like, this is going to be a great deal. You have a lot of seasoning. The evaluator goes to the property, the house burnt down probably a month Ooh. and a half before that. The seller just, you know, insurance hasn't been figured out at that point. So he, he didn't know, he didn't talk to the purchasers, but they're still making their payments. And I, you know, uh, we, we can't move forward right now. Uh, yeah, I, I had one last year where I was in, I was looking at the loan servicer records <laughs> and I saw this payoff for a loan and I kind of like, okay, it's cool. What's going on? And they're like, oh, the house yeah. burned down. Insurance paid off. And I'm like, holy cow. Like I had no idea. Wow. That that I had, yeah. Oh my goodness. The fun ones. Those are the interesting ones. Yeah, definitely. And we've all had them done. Oh, yep. It view of these so so now do you guys ever sell loans yourselves or do you just buy them we buy uh, we buy and hold uh -huh. we don't really sell um we you know we really try to get borrowers if they go into default we try really hard to work with them to get them on track get them any any way that's going to make it make sense for them to keep moving forward to to um congratulate them into a payoff some type of way um and then if if it goes south we do have a, a an roe part of the department or a part of the bank, I should say, um, that will sell property, but not the note itself. At that point, it's already gone through forfeiture and, and mm -hmm. then we're selling the property, yeah. Gotcha, and, and I was gonna ask, and, and I understand if you can't talk too much about it, but about the business model. So are you guys holding all of these notes or are you like selling them like, like to big institutions? Or I was just curious like on the back end, how that Nope, works. we're still holding them. Okay. We, go, we do buy from other banks, but uh, nope, we hold them. Uh, actually, that's to our horn, but First National, uh, for the state of Michigan, we are a solid bank uh, in the state of Michigan. Um, so so we definitely just hold or buy and hold. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, and then like, what's your view of like the total market now? You know, I know we talked about how like COVID went better than, you know, people expected. And I, I know right now in this environment, we're like, inflation and interest rates are starting to go up but like real estate prices just seem to at least in Colorado where I am just continue to yeah. run up it's pretty insane I was interested in like your view since you see more states and have a, a wider lens yeah it's uh fun that you brought that up because um I have a few coworkers that we we talk all day about what is going on <laughs> everywhere in every state that we see so um you know property values skyrocketed, right? Um, the thing that we kind of see trending is what happens when um, property values just go under. Um, is that going to come up? Is it going to come up? Um, when would it come up? You know, history always repeats itself. I do believe we will, we will eventually go through a time where, you know, we have really strong collateral a few years prior um, and the values haven't increased. Um, maybe they stay the same or maybe they just do decrease a bit. Um, you know, partials possibly might be your best way to go because a partial, you know, definitely protects that rocky um, evaluation situation um, or where the value truly is. But interest rates are going up, cost of money, cost of borrowing is going up. Um, I do believe you'll see a, um, you know, if you send me a quote request in the next few weeks, you'll probably see um, something that I might have bid at a seven before. I possibly might be bidding at close to an eight now. Um, we do know the industry is going up a little bit on, on you know, what their, what their yield that they want to see also just because of what investors are, are borrowing our buckets at. But I think, um, I think note buying, I think we're going to see a major increase on that too. Interest rates are going to go up. Um, I think it's going to be harder for other borrowers to possibly get into a conventional loan. Um, mm -hmm. I believe already only 25 or 30 percent of America even qualifies for traditional lending. So um, I do think the note buying, contract buying is going to get picked up. Um, a lot of people are going to be more interested in holding paper at a seven um, or an eight percent or whatever they can get originated. So I think I think uh, the note buying industry is just going to keep going up from here. Yeah, that's good. And, and even then, like those aren't bad. Like you're talking about a seven or eight percent discount, right? Like that's still a so yeah. maybe you're getting. So if someone's selling you a loan, maybe they're getting 92% of unpaid balance instead of 93. Like that's still super awesome. Like it's a change, but it's not. Yes. So I think our, I think our offers will still be in the 90%, especially on your solid loans. Um, but yeah, some of the yields are going to go up. <laughs> yeah. And that's normal. And I hear, and, you know, 
but but real estate and just economy in general has always had those cycles. I, I you know, I grew up in Florida and there's, there's a really good book I read a while back called Bubble in the Sun that talks about the Florida real estate booms and busts going back to the 1920s. Yes. And okay. over the decades, yeah, there's just all these cycles. So we are in this really interesting period where it seems like every property I look at has just a boatload of equity. Yeah. And like 10 years ago where it seemed like everything was upside down. But yeah, at some point that will change and they'll be back. But but to your earlier point, I think that's why it's important too to kind of understand what kind of down payment the borrower made and how much skin they had in the game. Because I've seen some loans with like really thin down payments and it doesn't take much for the market to turn and all of a sudden they get underwater and now their, their whole equation for how tied they are to that can change yeah. radically. Absolutely. Nope, I 100% agree. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's probably a pretty good stopping point. So Rachel, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. So thanks for having me. It's been great. And then I how look forward people... to seeing some more quotes for me coming in. <laughs> I know I'm working on it. <laughs> I've actually just been holding everything. So I haven't really been. Yeah, my issue has been I've been trying to buy more stuff. Fair so enough. I don't really want to let any stuff go. But yeah, hopefully I get some <laughs> pretty soon. And then um, are you guys going to be out at Paper Source? We will. Yeah. In May. Okay, definitely. awesome. Stop by yeah. and see us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. And then how can people get a hold of you if they have a people, note that they want to sell? Yeah, uh, you can feel free to give me a call um, or shoot me over an email. My email is rachel.sims at fnba.com. Um, and then I believe my phone number will be on the podcast also, but it's uh, 517-336-7623. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I'll put all your information in the show notes and everything. So Sounds great. Well, thanks again. Really appreciate it. See you, Dan.